Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 739, written by Sadik70. The Three Evil Gnomes. When I was seven, I woke up in the middle of the night to steal some biscuits or sweets from the kitchen. Our kitchen is right beside our conservatory, which has big open windows which allow you to glance into the garden. While eating, I heard some chatter from outside. Curious, I went to peer outside the window. I saw three little men in red pointy hats outside in my garden, bickering amongst themselves in a strange language I've never heard of before or after. I was so stricken with terror, I dared not speak. I ran to my parents' bedroom to tell them about our intruders. My dad was reluctant to believe me, but he could see I was obviously shaken up by something and came downstairs to investigate. They must have heard us coming because by the time we'd gotten to the conservatory, they'd already pegged it and were running through the back gate. My dad caught a glimpse of them too, but he only saw their pointy red hats. I've never seen him look so scared before or in complete disbelief. I decided to write this post now because my father recently brought this up and asked if I remembered, still completely baffled by the whole thing. Case Notes for File 739 The Murderous Band of Tiny Thieves So this one is just hilariously baffling. These three tiny gnomes, uh, were they actual men? Were they really gnomes? Probably not. Maybe a group of three men that are small and decided to live a life of crime, pursuant only, of course, by wearing red hats, because you gotta stand out, right? When you're robbing someone? I don't know. It seems more likely that they were trying to gather some kind of intelligence for some reason, unless they are actual mystical creatures. And I was just thinking of how funny it must have looked, just seeing them bobbing up and down, trying to run away <laughs> after being discovered. Murderously cute. Case file number 740, written by Sure Woodpecker 4910. The power of his true name. This took place about a month ago now, and my friends are still confirming that it wasn't a joke at all and none of them knew beforehand. For background, I, 19 male, had a sleepover on Saturday with a group of friends. C, 21 non-binary, A, 19 non-binary, and D, 19 female. Our other friend, H, 17 female, was meant to spend the night as well, but changed her mind after a stressful week. The plan was I would wake up Saturday morning to go to a college open house at my college campus with H, who is currently in her tour process. After the tour, we would come home and C, A, and D would arrive. We would all be dyeing our hair and playing some games like Mario Party and One Night Werewolf. We really like playing games all together like this. C was planning on getting drunk, which we all thought would be fun to witness. After H had already gone home with her new hairdo, and I had elected to cut my hair into more of a shag, I was helping D bleach her hair. We were all laughing as C had just finished attempting to shotgun a can of hard seltzer. Keyword attempt. It got all over my bathroom mirror and walls instead. And A was playing music for all of us. D suddenly called me Philip. There are three things to know as to why her calling me Philip was so strange. My name is not and has never been Philip, not even closely related to it either. I am female to male, transgender. My legal name is nowhere close to Philip and neither is my actual name. My mom was going to name me Philip had I been born an assigned male. I froze and said, How the hell did you know that? She said, No what? I laughed and said, No, seriously, when did my mom tell you that and when did you come up with the idea for this joke? It's a good one though, I guess. You spooked me for a second there. I don't know what you're talking about. I just think you give me Philip vibes, that's it. I explained to my friends that my mom had wanted to name my brother Philip, but his dad objected and so she saved it for her next kid. When I came out and the doctors declared me female, she scrapped Philip and her and her dad came up with something else related to a movie character my mom admired. My friends all confirmed that my mom hadn't mentioned it at all at any point that day or prior, 
Normally I would think they were pulling my leg, but even my mom confirmed and pointed out, why would I even bring that up with them? Given that even my severely drunk friend, C, was dead serious, this friend can't hold water without immediately losing it when drunk. We can't even make eye contact without a, <laughs> don't look at me, an eruption of giggles from C. I'm inclined to trust them. Plus, after how freaked out I looked, they would have spilled the beans by now. D swears that she doesn't know how she knew about it. She just had this feeling that I had Philip vibes. Or should have been a Philip. Anyone have any other ideas? Cause I'm at a loss and I'm becoming convinced it was some sort of glitch in the matrix or a case of morphic resonance fields or something. Case notes for file 740. The power of his true name. Well, if you look back in lore, you often find that knowing the name of a demon or a dragon can give you power over that creature. Now, clearly this doesn't translate to real life in humans because we all know each other's names and we don't gain any power from knowing someone's true name. At least not any more than information can give us through the internet. But I think there is something towards anonymity and being known to other people can be a bit nerve wracking sometimes. You never know who's out there and what they want. In the specific context of this glitch, where someone knew not your name, but what your mother was going to name you had you been born male. Now yes, of course, it's always possible that this is still a prank and they're just not telling you for some reason, although that's the best part when you tell them that's a prank. I think I'm more agreeing with you that it's probably not a prank and somehow D just knew that your name was supposed to be Philip. I like to think of it as the information was there, that is, your mom thought it and said, okay, yes, I'm going to name my baby Philip if I do have a boy. And this information is jotted down in the server log, sort of like the activity of changing your name in a video game will be noted or naming an item or whatever. That information's always there on the server, so it exists. Then it's just a matter of transferring that information, downloading it to D. It's just subconscious, it's instinctual. There's a transfer process between the subconscious to the conscious. The subconscious is filtering so much information all the time, and this could just be one of those things. Maybe we're constantly getting information from the main server, but our subconscious brain is a barrier to accessing it. So we may have access to a ton of information that is beyond the norm. We just don't know. We can't quite get to it. Creepy file number 46. Written by Rich Western, 3010. Thank God I didn't open the door. Around three to four years ago, when I was 12, I was at my aunt's house visiting for camp. I was upstairs and saw the camera go off, saying someone was at the back of the door. It was my older cousin, so I went downstairs to open the door. I was able to see him for a little bit before I actually got to the door. There's a window by the door. He looked so determined and focused on opening the door. He spent less than a minute at the door, then he got in his car and sped off. I didn't think much about this honestly. All I thought was, oh, he must have been in a bit of a rush if he didn't bother to call us to open the door. I was even thinking about opening the door and calling out to him before he drove off, but I was feeling lazy that day. About two minutes later, the house phone started ringing along with my personal phone and my grandma's phone. I picked it up and it was another one of my aunts telling me not to open the door and stay away from the windows. They told me they already called the cops, but that I should call again. I was very confused and asked what happened. They explained my aunt and cousin got into a very heated argument about the business she owned, left him $300,000 in debt the day before that led to him hitting her. The next day, he came looking for her very upset but couldn't find her at the office. He proceeded to drive to my aunt's house while on the phone with some family members telling them how he was going to kill my aunt, his mother. I remember going to the kitchen and picking up a knife to keep with me just in case. I was shaking while thinking about where to hide. He ended up coming back and he started walking around the house looking through the windows before he sat at the front step. Luckily, I was on the second floor. I don't even know what exact time I called the police due to my panicking. The cops ended up coming and made my cousin leave, but my grandma wanted to talk with him first. Throughout their whole talk, I still hid upstairs, listening through an open window. 
I prayed she didn't mention my name in case he came back later in the night. Luckily, he never did. To this day, I'm so glad I didn't open the door. I feel like I was truly protected. We don't normally lock both the screen door and actual door, but we did that day. He struggled so much with the lock screen door that he broke the handle. Luckily, didn't open the door where he knew the code. This situation still gives me so much anxiety and I don't understand how he went back to acting like nothing happened. Never been back since, just in case he snaps again. Case notes for the creepy file number 46. Well, that was very unwise of your uh, cousin to make a phone call where he's actually threatening to kill someone else. Your aunt. His mother. And I mean, I get it, you know, $300,000 in debt. Maybe by accident, but still, that's an insane amount of debt to be put into by someone else. Now, maybe they were business partners. It probably is more of a mutual thing that happened, but nevertheless, that's rough. So I understand the motivation and the anger, but threatening to kill someone is never right, and especially to do it on a phone call. Honestly, I'm surprised he wasn't arrested. I guess your aunt didn't press charges. And you noted that you don't often lock the doors or windows, but this time, just seemingly at random, you did. Hmm. Was there some sort of guardian angel foot? Some sort of instinct telling you, you need to lock the doors this time. Just today. Won't tell you why, but you'll appreciate it. And I'm guessing you did. <laughs> Our subconscious, either by magic or just through sheer excess information that we don't know how we have, but we have, knows a lot. And sometimes that information is fed to our conscious mind. So just listen to it. It's not 100% accurate, but man, trust your gut. It'll save you more times than not.